are doing. Oh my god, this is so gross. <gasps> oh god, what's going on? I feel like I'm gonna be killing these reservoirs and Dutch people are gonna be like, no. So some of you know here on my channel that we are currently in Australia and it was completely unexpected as of last year's events and we are in the processes of trying to get back to the Netherlands. While we were here though, I thought I would try and make some of my favorite Dutch dishes and see if I could recreate a little bit of a, a taste of the Netherlands while we're still here in Australia. So I thought I'd give it a go. I am no chef, I am no professional. I just found some recipes online that I liked the sound of and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try and recreate the Netherlands in my kitchen. So the first thing I'm prepping is vegetarische croquetta. Veggie croquettes is like the best treat. It's something that you can grab from the snack bar and obviously normally they have beef in them. And in the last 12 months, I have become a vegetarian. I found this recipe on YouTube. I'll link it down below, all the recipes that I've used. If you have a better recipe, share with me your family recipes, leave me a link or send me an email. I would love to try them out. I remember when I was pregnant just before we left the Netherlands, biggest cravings for croquetta with mustard sauce and I would walk down to this little snack bar that was owned by a Moroccan guy and it was the same guy every time and I would go in with my great big belly and sit down and eat a croquette. The veggie stock is simmering away. I am going to start prepping the apples to go into apple tart. So a Dutch apple pie, I guess. That's something that I feel like you order every time you go to a cafe and it always comes with whipped cream, which at first I found really strange to have whipped cream with a cake, but it's obviously delicious. So that's what you do. You get a coffee. People in the Netherlands drink like seven coffees a day. So a coffee and a cake and especially mm. an apple tart is the best way to spend the afternoon. I feel like the best apple tart I have ever had while I was in Amsterdam, I'll say, this is very Amsterdam specific. I forget the place, what it's actually called. The Laatste Kruimel, of the Apple Kruimel. The Laatste Kruimel. It's like a little cake shop. They make everything in the actual little cafe. And it's so small. You can only fit like seven people or something in there. It's tiny, tiny, tiny. And the stuff they post on their Instagram and the stuff they have in the shop literally looks next level amazing. That was like what inspired me trying to recreate this apple tart. I know it's not going to be anywhere near as good as the one that I had at Large Claremont, but we're going to try. That's what we're going to try. Melting the butter. And then I'm going to add the flour and make a roux. And then we add some of the veggies. I did not have all of the veggies at home so I kind of actually just made it up but things that I figured would be pretty yummy in a vegetarian croquette so like potatoes and carrots and a bit of cauliflower and mushrooms I know you can make like all mushroom ones but that seems a little intense for me I'm gonna put the flour in and then we add the stock and then I'm gonna put it in the freezer to cool down so we can roll it in some crumbs if I'm honest, I don't think I would probably ever make this much effort to make them. When I get to the Netherlands, I would just go to the snack bar and buy them. Unless they turn out to be unbelievably amazing, but I have doubts, so <laughs> we will see. Oh my God, this is so gross. <gasps> All right, kneading dough. Oh my God. Oh no. Uh. <sighs> oh. This should literally be how not to make. <gasps> this looks so bad. Oh no, what have I done? All right, more sugar. 
One tablespoon of cinnamon, but it seems like a lot of cinnamon. A tablespoon? Let's do, let's do that much. This smells amazing. in the middle. This full on looks like a Dutch apple tart. I don't know why I expected it to not look like that. I mean, I'm not completely inept in the kitchen, but I just, I am surprised at myself. Like this full on looks legit. Look. Does that look like an apple tart? Like that's crazy. I really feel like I know how big to make them. Like that big. Oh my God. So I don't think this is thick enough. How does anyone make a croquette from this? It's like sloppy. Oh my God. Oh no. This looks terrible. A few moments later. All right, I feel like this one's working better than the last one. So I don't know. Am I just bad at it? Am I going to get better? Like, I know I said I missed croquetta, but did I miss them this much? Did I really feel like this was worth it? I think not. I think this was way harder than I thought it was going to be. They look like little poos. So... <laughs> This is my first one <laughs> and this is the next one. So I feel like we're getting better. I'm getting the hang of it. We shall see if I actually get better. I slash, I should probably fix that first one, but I've got so much, it's gonna take so long. If literally anyone has a better way, an easier way or a foolproof way of making croquetta, that is better than this way because I feel like I'm actually just rolling soft melted butter in breadcrumbs. It's actually feel that's exactly what I'm doing. Guys, I have just made the ugliest croquettes ever. I'm like... <gasps> I don't know how this happened. And you know what is also really tricky is that the person in the YouTube video doesn't even really show you how to roll them properly. They literally use one example and their hand is covering it the whole time. I had no idea what I was doing. I'm gonna show you what they look like before I cook them. I'm like, I have very low expectations for how these are going to taste. <laughs> oh, they are all different sizes, all different shapes. And I have no idea how they're going to cook or if they're going to be any good. We shall see. All right, let's pull it out. It's been like five minutes. Oh my God, I feel like this actually looks like a croquette. Oh God, ow. I have full on made croquettes stop all right and here is my finished whoa apple dart stop it did i just become a baker <laughs> i don't know how i'm gonna get that out it's like a full-on old school tin let's let that cool off Okay, so I have like one of these old tins, not like a push tin, and I just tried to flip the cake to get it out. Don't do that. Don't flip the tart. Just cook it in something where the sides come off because now what I have is this and the whole cake has fallen apart to cake. It's like an apple pie. Can this be saved? It's like the whole thing's come open. This has all come off. I mean, I feel like if you just mix it with some cream or something, 
it would be fine. Who knew that these recipes were going to be harder than I thought they were going to be? I have my croquettes, again, that are completely all different sizes. But to be fair, you know, apart from their shape, like the color looks all right. I'm going to sit down and have a bite and see if I am transported back to the snack bar while I was pregnant. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare make it possible for me to continue making videos. So I wanted to let you know about what Skillshare can also do for you guys. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of creative and inspiring classes for curious people where you guys get to explore new skills and dive right into your creativity. Some topics that Skillshare cover are things like logo design or illustration, painting, watercolors. I know for me personally, these are the last couple of weeks I've been taking on some extra projects. So one class that I've really been loving lately is diving right into the productivity and forming habits that you can keep, I guess. So this class is run by another YouTuber called Thomas Frank. But I feel like in this class that he's provided for Skillshare, it's really honed in knowledge and super direct with very practical tips that you can start implementing straight away. So that was kind of my big takeaway and the difference from using a platform like Skillshare as opposed to the information that he puts out on YouTube. The other bonus, of course, with using Skillshare is that there's no ads. So they are constantly updating their platform with new and exciting classes and you get to watch them uninterrupted. With all of this for as little as $10 a month, it seems like a bargain. And I know I love Skillshare as a learning platform, so I hope that you guys would love it too. The first 1,000 people to click on the link in my description will get a free premium trial so you can try out all of the classes that you think you might be interested in and give your creativity a real go. That's it from me, so let's get back into the tasting. This, I guess, is the big reveal. Do I... I feel like I'm back in the Netherlands. Some mustard. Whoop. All right. I'm like nervous. <laughs> Does that even make sense? Hmm. I mean. I feel like that tastes all right. That tastes pretty good. It doesn't taste like the ones that I remember having, but, but still. Yeah. Damn yummy. I just make croquettes and I'll probably never do it again. How am I meant to eat this? Hang on. <sighs> I mean, I feel like this just tastes like an apple pie and I've never made apple pie. I don't actually know if there's a real difference between like Dutch apple tart and an apple pie. Oh, that is hot. I do not feel like I'm at the last crumb. Let's just put it that way. Okay. So all in all, I feel like they weren't a complete disaster. They were way more difficult than I thought it was going to be. And no, I don't feel like I'm transported back to the Netherlands at all. Like not even a little bit. And that was kind of the point. I will probably never make these things again. And when we get back to the Netherlands, I will just buy them like a normal person does. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.